Hey, in this video we are talking about the air war in the War of the Ring. As you all know, the two parties were the alliance of the free people of Middle-earth and the Sauron coalition. Albeit the War of the Ring was mainly a ground campaign with some naval elements, we can say that also air assets had an important role in the final outcome of the conflict. Let's start from the free people of the Middle Earth. I mean, the Alliance did not have any specific air asset, but one member of the Alliance was the Eagles. They were a late member of the Alliance. In fact, they fully entered the conflict only at the final battle, the Battle of the Black Gate, but they've always been in favor of the free people. It is difficult to estimate how many assets the eagle had. They were Myers, so they were not unlimited. Uh, they were not uh, people, they couldn't recruit new assets and so on. So we can estimate the overall number between 10 and 20, which is not definitely a large number, but very effective. The air asset used by the eagles was the eagle itself. The eagle itself is around 12 meters long. As most of the things about the War of the Ring, we don't have exact measurements or exact performance data, so we have to make reasonable estimates. So in terms of propulsion, it was flapping wing, obviously, with feathers. So we are talking the aerodynamics of slow speed. So no other rule, no DSI intakes, uh, and uh, crucially, no specific fuel consumption. So the range was probably very long, it was probably a continental range. So they could get where they needed to be and could stay there for a long time without worrying too much about any form of fuel. Well, they obviously needed to eat but that wasn't a heavy limitation as you normally have with fuel. The Eagle sensors are in the optical band. We don't know exactly if their eyes are actually sensitive to the same wavelengths that are available to the human eye, but we may infer that they're not very different. However, like all the Eagles, their sight was very acute. So the, the resolution of those eyes, so they're probably much, much better than the human capability, probably three, four times better. In terms of weaponry, they don't have any range weapon, but the short range weaponry is definitely effective. They have strong talons, they have a very strong beak, and they can use it just to break, just to crush, just to grab and pull and tear apart. So they are definitely not effective beyond visual range, but within visual range and, I mean, in at close quarters, they are probably very, very, very effective. Or better, we have proved that they have been because when they confronted directly uh, Sauron's assets, well, they came out on top. The Sauron coalition made a larger use of air assets. We have testimonies of the fact that birds like crows or bats have been pressed into service of the Sauron coalition. Their mission was to provide air surveillance and air reconnaissance. So we can say that in terms of ISR, at least for what regards air assets, the Sauron's coalition was definitely in a better place. However, the main air asset of the Mordor forces were the fell beasts that were used as mounts by the Nazgûls. Those assets were sort of unique, had a very particular appearance. They had a relatively short and stubby body, but they had a tail, a long tail, and they also had a long neck. Again, we are talking flapping wings, so slow speed aerodynamics. The wings, compared with those of the eagles, seem to be way less efficient. They were more akin to the wings of a bat rather than the wings of a bird. Definitely not a match for the eagles. However, they had talons as well, they had teeth. The entire weapon set probably a bit less effective, a bit less hardened than the eagles, but still effective, particularly in the air-to-ground role, where we know that they 
the Battle of the Fields of Pelennor, they actually managed to inflict severe losses. However, we have to say that even if the platform was inferior to the Eagles, the fact that these beast had a Nazgul as a rider sort of compensated this. The Nazguls were very effective warriors, particularly for uh, their psychological effect that they had against other combatants. Apparently on the Eagles they didn't have a lot of effect, but, but against men, for example, they had a large impact. So, which kind of lessons can we learn from the War of the Ring? Well, we had two main confrontations. The Battle of the Fields of Pelennor in front of Minas Tirith, where the Sauron's forces, Sauron's air assets, pretty much acted uh, without uh, contrast, without air contrast. They were, they, the only contrast was from the ground, and they managed to be quite effective against the um, Free People's ground forces. It is probably interesting to notice that even in this case the air superiority is extremely important. In fact, when the Witch King actually relinquished uh, its position of advantage being airborne, it basically gets killed. At the Battle of the Black Gate, the Eagles take part at the end of the battle. They, in that battle, they have a numeric superiority to the remaining Nazguls and uh, pretty much win the day. So they clear the sky above the Free People's Coalition and uh, then they execute a number of other tasks, including recovering Frodo, that are extremely important. So what's the lesson that we can learn? Well, the usual one domain of the air is extremely important, even in Tolkien's work. So if you like this video and you're interested in something which is about the real world of aeronautics and aerospace, there are plenty of videos on the channel that are going to appear beside me. Meanwhile, thank you very, very much for watching and see you there.